Okay, in this video I want to bring in the idea of ETFs and investment trusts. Now this is another selling point of 80-20. Most places where you go and look for information about investments and DIY investing, they, they normally link to a broker of some kind. And what you'll find is if somebody's selling a fund, there's two things you should be worried about is A, how are they getting paid because they tend to only push the things they get paid on. That's why they're in their best buy list. And B is how much are they getting paid because what happens with a lot of them, they get paid by recommended unit trusts when actually investment trusts and ETFs could be better and cheaper, but the problem is they don't get paid on the back end, which is why they've never really been in the mainstream until very recently. Now, what I wanted to do is start to bring that out to the masses and, and a bit more um, mainstream, so you can actually start to look at investment trusts and ETFs with a um, with a sort of a momentum eye and actually be able to make a few decisions. Now, if you go into the 80 sector, 80 20 sector data area like I just did, you will see the investment trust and ETF tabs. Now, what we do is, much like the unit trust section, I will go and run research and our algorithms on every investment trust that's out there that you guys can buy. And what's interesting is it starts to throw up some um, interesting plays that aren't available in unit trusts. For example, there can be some more commodity and natural resource plays as you see up here, or, or hedge funds. And again, like the unit trust area, they only appear if there's a good play compared relatively to their peers. So if there's a some if there's an investment trust that's doing particularly um, well, it's got a stable trend, it's not just top performer, it's got to have a lot more to it than that in terms of stability and momentum, then it will, will appear. Sometimes you might find some of these categories in here won't be there, but because there's actually no opportunities. But let's take a look at one, for example. If we wanted to go for... Um, let's say UK equities. Well, UK. Let's go for uh, UK equity income, but let's go for UK all companies for, for now. What you'll see is that this offers the opportunity to have a look at something slightly different. So we've got the same similar categories as before with name, icing code, which you can use to try and find the investment on your um, your broker platform like Hargreaves Lansdowne. I've opened it up here just to show you how I would do it. You can put this sort of icing code into the browser and then you will find the um, in this case the investment trust on their their platform come on Hargreaves speed up a bit there we go so you could actually go in and buy the fund if you decided you liked it but let's go back to 80 20 we've got the one month return the six month return and we've got the max fall in the last six months so how much what, what was the worst case scenario you would have had from the if you'd bought at the peak and then it sort of you sort of sold out on the on the low but what you'll notice is that in these sections the ongoing charge is much lower than what they are on unit trust so going trying to conserve um, charges and actually conserve your money cheap charges is better especially if it's a good opportunity so here what we have I've also introduced something called the estimated discount to NAV now this data is very difficult to find normally investment trusts are very different to unit trusts because what they are essentially are a share rather than a, a um, an open-ended fund where there are units created. What that means is that the value of the fund itself can actually be more or less than the cumulative price of all the shares in existence. Put simply, you could be getting it at a discount, i.e. buying it cheap. So imagine you're going to the sales and you were going to buy a TV. It was a it's, it's cheap if it's got a negative figure or you're paying a premium. The problem is is that what you want to watch out for is if, for example, in this one, the, the Capital Gearing Asset Management Trust that's highlighted here, it's at, it's at a, a premium. Now, what would happen is you might buy that fund if you just looked at it on the sort of momentum plays and then think, yeah, that's, that's, very, that's a good fund. But when you've got two opportunities like here, there's a uh, Invesco fund that's got a, it's actually a discount, as is the other Invesco uh, management fund that's there. So you might sit there and think, well, well, hold on a second. I, I, I might rather buy something at a discount than the premium because the chances are if it's a premium, you're paying slightly over the odds for it. But this, yet again, you've got the charts below that show how the funds perform in up markets and down markets. You might sit there and look at these charts and sit there and think, well, the the Invesco Perpetual Select UK was a, is a bit more 
Um, it's less swings, it's a little bit more consistent in terms of returns, and had a particularly strong November. And interestingly, that one is also a fun operating at, at a discount and is the cheapest at 0.9%. Now, just having a bit of research and you look at someone like Hargreaves and you want to find out a bit more about it, then you can go onto their onto their um, fact sheets and have a look around. One thing I would say to you is, if there's any information like this you want on the site, tell me because I can actually provide it for you. And, I mean, there's no limits to what I, what I can do. I'm just building a tool that you guys actually actually like. So you can click around on their site, of course, and find out a bit more information if you want But um, and actually purchase the idea. But what you actually do by looking at investment trusts is you find opportunities that can be run by the same manager as the unit trust, for example, and then it will be cheaper investment trust version. So... There's the investment trust section. ETFs, we have a similar idea where there are some great opportunities that have been pulled out here in ETFs. And this one, for example, I've just gone to Japan. At the moment, there are um, hedged versions of Japan funds are particularly good because of a weak yen and you get the stock market uplift. And you can see the chart. The one different column in the tables here is the methodology of how these ETFs are made, which is really important and again is hardly ever picked up anywhere. We've got the idea of being a physical ETF, which means that any an ETF will buy the shares that it's actually trying to replicate, if it's trying to replicate an index. A sampled one might only have some of the shares, whereas a whereas you might get a synthetic one, for example, a, a synthetic gold um ETF, which actually wouldn't hold any gold, but of course there becomes other counterparty risks involved. So people need to be aware of it, and if you're an ETF investor, you'll understand that. But again, you can see the cost. You can rank all these columns as you could previously. But what it does is it allows you to start to investigate other interesting areas, and, it will, and in time it will throw up some opportunities you would not be aware of that existed. Again, you can rank all these columns if you so wish. But what makes what we do unique and exciting around ETFs is that it only pulls through opportunities that are worth pursuing on a, in a stable on a momentum basis and trends that are working that might be interesting to play. Now, for example, the, the dollar was very strong recently against the yen and that was because of opposing views from the respective countries' central banks around money printing. And other trends may be shorting the market. During the sell-off in the autumn, there were some strong shorting ETFs, ones that were selling the market that started to come through, and they, well, that's quite an extreme form of momentum. That allows people who really want to do momentum sort of hyper version, they can, they, can, they can do that to boost their returns. Now, it's allowing people to make the choice. That's what I wanted, to identify these trends. What's incredibly powerful is to create a tool and is what I did with, try to do with 8020, and I've always tried to do a tool that will analyze things and throw up opportunities, not a tool that will confirm what you already think, which is what a lot of people do. You speak to an advisor, you speak to people in the markets, they have a set view on what's going on in the world, and they only listen to things that confirm it. What I wanted to do was create things that would throw up an op interesting opportunity to play. It could be a currency one, it could be um, long or short of market. And that, to me, is worth investing with and using so hopefully you will see that what we're doing at 8020 is really quite unique and quite exciting and the cost of what we're asking for is the equivalent of a cup of coffee a week so say three pounds a week which is you probably agree is a very good value